few extra hands out here this morning um, so that I can hold, hold the microphone and all the goodies that I have. We welcome you today in the name of Christ to our outdoor worship. Um, it's great to have you here and we hope this service will be inspiring and encourage you in your life of faith. So we obviously didn't have enough faith to have this in the outdoor shelter because there are clouds in the sky and we figured before this service is over that it's probably going to rain. With all of our faith, it's just not going to hold it off. And of course, we need the rain, so we hope that that happens and we can have some rain today. So we will continue to meet um, in the outdoor chapel next Sunday or here in this place if it permitted permitted last Sunday we didn't meet here because it had been really wet and um, so we decided not to come here because it was good not good for the instruments to have so much humidity and so much wet but next week we'll meet once again our plan has been to use May and September um, as times in which we go outdoors for worship and so we enjoy doing that and being in God's great cathedral so I have a couple of reminders and announcements to share with you today. First of all, uh, an announcement about our church app. I hope all of you have the app on your phone or on your device, um, whatever it is. But just for the sake of information purposes, we continue to seek to make it more connect with your life at Calvary and to grow and expand that. And so on behalf of the technology committee who is um, working with the app, I just want to remind you now that you can live stream right from the app our services that are inside the church. So you can still go to YouTube, Calvary's YouTube site, and get on our streaming. But you can also just go into the app and connect with, there's a, there is a place there that says connect to the live stream, and you can do that. So for the 11 o'clock service this morning, you can do that if you wanted to watch the 11 o'clock service. There's also just a reminder that there is also available on the media page of the app, you can watch old um, videos, so like past videos. So there is the opportunity to do that. You don't have to go to the YouTube channel to do that anymore. So please give it a try, it, especially if you're not able to be in worship, utilize the app to make those kinds of connections. And please, um, Jason Vanderwerk asks for any feedback that you have in using the app to live stream or to connect to the media. Um, he would love to have that from you. He's the chair of the technology committee. Today, we continue with Sunday school. Reminder that our adults will be down in the fellowship hall. The children um, age three to um, 10 years old, fifth grade will be up here. And then of course, confirmation and youth um, down in some of the the youth room for the youth com youth class and the confirmation is in the educational wing, the first um, classroom on the right. But we invite you to come and be a part of that. We've also got some other classes going on in the week. The discipleship group meets this afternoon by Zoom. Tomorrow, there's the continuation of the Revelation study. Um, so just that reminder that we have all kinds of things that are going on. I'm start we're starting into the book of Acts in my Wednesday Sports Center Bible study. So there's the opportunity for, for learning and growth there as well. And for those of you that come, can't come out in the day, we promise that we're going to continue to try to expand our options so that there's some opportunities at evening for faith growth um, and as well and building compassionate relationships. So next Sunday, during Sunday school, we are going to have worship training. If you have an inkling that you'd like to be a worship leader, a communion assistant, an usher, um, and want to know how to do that, um, please come to the sanctuary for, at Sunday school time, 945 to 1045, and we're going to be talking through those roles. Um, we'd love to have you serve. Um, it's open for anyone, and um, just it makes worship so much better when there are a lot of us sharing our gifts. It's just, it's so good because we're all different and we all have different things to share and it just enriches our life together. So I hope you don't think about it as a duty, but as something that you can do to bring a little <coughs> bit more joy to worship. With that being said, there is a whiteboard right there, um, over to the right behind Lynn and Patty, um, that has opportunities to serve at this service during the month 
of October and November in the roles of reader, in the roles of worship assistant, and in the roles of usher. So if you would like to do any of those things throughout the month of October and November, there's a pen over there. Yes, and I think Susan's going to be over there. Awesome. Yes, she'll be happy to talk to you. And, and you can be equipped to do that in a way that you know what you're doing um, by coming next Sunday for worship training. Yes. Yes. That's right. Terry's the 11 o'clock usher person to coordinate that, and Ann Huff coordinates the worship assistants, the lectors, and also the communion assistants. So she would love to have you be in touch with her and sign up at 11 o'clock if you participate there at that in that worship service. Um, just a couple more things. I apologize for the length of the announcements, but um, just a reminder that the Congregational Life has their trivia night um, on September 23rd. You can sign up for that on the app as well as just reach out to Erica or David Barrier if you can make that evening. Um, Stewardship is hosting a QPR um, event, which is question, um, question, persuade, refer, which is training that you might not have thought about that you could benefit from. It is, this is training through Atrium, and it is an opportunity for all of us to be better equipped to handle conversations with those who are talking about suicide. Um, we know there's a lot of mental health challenges in our world, and the better we can be prepared to also offer something of value to someone who is thinking about that terrible thing, um, this, is, this is an opportunity for us as a Christian community to be better equipped as a congregation, but also in our personal lives for that. So they're doing this training in a lot of different churches, but the stewardship ministry at Calvary is very interested in offering things to promote wholeness and mental health, and so this is one of those trainings. That's on September the 30th, and it's a very short training from 10 until 1230, but we would love to have you come. And if you're aware of someone that may benefit from that because they work in this area and their job, or they just, because they want to have that kind of training, um, certainly let, let them know that this is open to anyone who would like to come. Last but not least, I, I've been asked just to invite you to offer special prayers for the Wayne right now, our family. Many of you who have been at Calvary a while know Wayne, and um, he actually has been in this church his whole life. He was a child at Buffalo Street, um, Calvary, um, which is the first location of Calvary. Wayne is nearing the end of his life, and he his daughters are there with him, and so they would like your prayers for a very peaceful journey to the new home that Wayne will have with God and um, Wayne's still very alert and very faith-filled and it's telling us he knows where he's going so he's at peace um, but they want to make sure that that he has an easy passing so they ask for your prayers and I believe those are my announcements today Jesus said where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. That was our text last week, right? There's potential. There's promise in that. So let us open our hearts um, to that truth today and prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us. Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us confess our failures. God of eternal love, we pray you will listen as we confess our failures in love and friendship. We talk about such things as caring, community, and concern, but instead we show anger hostility, and greed. We talk about faith, hope, and love, but instead we show injustice, distrust, and apathy. 
Forgive the sins of our fallen condition, the sins of our broken promises, and the sins that we dare not name. In the name of Jesus, who was crucified for sin, forgive us. Amen. This is how God showed love for us. Jesus came into the world so that we might have life. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that God loves us and sent Jesus to be the one through whom we are forgiven and have new beginnings. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us join in the song to open our hearts. Scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 50. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now 
therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even he is doing today. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing it today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for today is from the 18th chapter of Matthew. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and he could not pay. His Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I have mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. I invite you to see it. See it. I'm not really a math person. I don't have a problem with math. It's useful in daily life. And I did fine in math class, but I don't really have an affection for it like some people do. What about you? You like math? <laughs> you like math? Some people are really into math. I think some people here are. They love the numbers. They love the spreadsheet. They especially love it when everything comes together on those spreadsheets. It all looks so beautiful when it's well balanced and exactly how it should be. Today's gospel may be a favorite if you like numbers. If you like numbers, today's gospel may be a favorite. For the rest of us, Hopefully, the incredibly large number that points to God's kindness will be what draws us in. Because the numbers 
do tell the story here. Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I... Thank you. <laughs> Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive someone who wrongs me? How many times should I forgive a fellow church member? Seven times? Seven is like a perfect number in the Bible, you know? Seven days and the world was complete. But Jesus responds, no, Peter, take that divine number three. You know what I'm talking about? Three, Holy Trinity. Take that divine number three, add the four corners of the world, get your seven, but just keep it going. Seven and seven. And then keep on going if you want. In other words, Peter, let your forgiveness be as high as heaven. Let us be as broad as the world. Let your forgiveness go on forever and ever. Now, maybe Peter and the others did not get that. So Jesus tried again with the numbers. He tells it the story of, tells a parable of a king or lord. Same name that we give to God, right? Here comes the numbers again. The king forgives 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents equals, math, 15 years, to, excuse me, one talent. See, I'm already getting messed up in the math. <laughs> one talent, one talent equals 15 years of labor. One talent. The king forgave 10,000. So how many years of labor does this servant owe? 150,000 years of labor. Got it right. Use my calculator. <laughs> That's a lot. That's more than several people can pay back, right? But then this same slave, and remember, slave and servant are often used inter interchangeably, and let's clean it up, because I know you have a negative in your mind when you think of slave. Let's just say that a slave or a servant is one that is to be devoted to their king or lord. Sort of like we are to be devoted to God as children of God. So this slave is not willing to forgive 150 denarius. And I'm sure you've heard that one denarius was what a laborer was paid for one day's work. So here's the comparison in math, right? 150 days of work not forgiven by the slave versus the 150,000 years of work that is forgiven by the king or Lord, or in our case, God. Lynn and Patty, I don't know what you're thinking over there, but this spreadsheet is not balanced. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not balanced at all. Even I can see that. <clears throat> Jesus has already made this point in Matthew's Gospel earlier. In the Sermon on the Mount, he said, Pray then in this way. Forgive us our debts, God, as we have also forgiven.
forgiven our debtors. Forgive us. We know you have. Help us to forgive others as you have so graciously forgiven us. Today, Jesus is seeking to drive home this point once again. And it seems to be a point that we have a really hard time with sinking in. So over the last few weeks, we've been talking about big enough. Is our faith life big enough to handle the questions of life that we have? Is our faith life big enough to wrestle with those things out in our lives that we struggle with? Is our faith life big enough to allow us to follow Jesus where he's leading us into the future? Today we're asking, are we letting our faith in God's forgiveness lead us to the same kind of forgiveness that we have received? Or to share that forgiveness with others, the same forgiveness that we've received. As we gather here, I think we all know, this is really like down the center in our Christian faith, it's about as basic as it gets. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Everything in Christianity is centered on our being able to take this enormous gift of God's kindness and then to love God back by showing that same kindness to others. And as we see in the parable, very minute ways, because God's forgiveness is always so much greater. But our little acts of forgiveness can free people, can release them, can give them new beginnings, new opportunities at life, just as we have received the greatest opportunity at life through the love that God has given to us in Jesus Christ. This parable and this conversation remind us that we need to get personal about forgiveness. This is how it was for Joseph. Our first reading. Some bad things had happened in his life. His brothers had sold him off. But now, in our first reading for today, he has the opportunity to not give back what he received. <clears throat> and he did it. Forgiveness came, became personal. He even said that God meant that bad stuff for good. It was a way that God was to save his people in Israel by putting Joseph in Egypt. Forgiveness may not have sunk in completely for Peter yet either. It may take that threefold denial and then Jesus' threefold invitation to come and follow him for him to grasp the enormity of what he has in Jesus' love and forgiveness. Psychologist Everett Worthington has been a forgiveness expert, had been a forgiveness expert for more than a decade. decade. A forgiveness expert, okay? He was a forgiveness expert for more than a decade when a young man smashed through the windows of a house in Knoxville, Tennessee on New Year's Eve, 1995, and brutally murdered his mother with a crowbar. Forgiveness was no longer an academic exercise for Edward. 
It was no longer just a story or words on the page or conversations that he was having with his clients. In an article in the religious news back in April, a Everett said, I was really angry. And I remember pointing to a baseball bat against the wall and saying, I wish whoever did that to my mother were here. I would take that baseball bat and beat his brains out. Worthington, process and working with others on forgiveness had always been a five-step process. It was called reach. Recall the hurt, emphasize with the offender, give an altruistic offer of forgiveness, commit to that forgiveness, and hold on to forgiveness again and again and again. Change the negative behavior, wanting to kill the person that did something to you, and fill those negative emotions with empathy for that other person. Everett said in the article, it took a really long time for him to move into forgiveness. But he did. And he said, when I did, this is a big part of the point of the article. I invite you to go look it up and I can give it to you specifically. He said, when I finally did, there was relief. Relief. He says, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness can weaken your immune system. It can hike up your heart rate. It can increase your stress hormones. It can literally kill you. What unforgiveness puts out of whack? Forgiveness can restore to equilibrium. It can do that while improving relationships, psychological well-being, and spiritual health. It doesn't mean that people don't have to be accountable for their actions. Forgiveness is personal. Worthington says he needed to forgive to go on in life. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen in scripture after scripture that letting our faith relationship with God lead us beyond our current understandings and experiences of life can enlarge our life. It can make our life bigger. It can make it better. In letting go of old self-centered ways and mindsets, we can begin to put on the new clothing of faith and the larger life that God has in mind for us through faith in Jesus Christ. Learning to forgive as we have been forgiven is a way to multiply our joy. It's a way to multiply our joy in life and just on a common sense level, it's a way to be healthier. It's a way to have an overall bigger and better life. Why would you and I turn our backs on such a gift? Why would we? It is a proven remedy for our misery when we want to lash out at others and hold hate in our hearts. Patty and Lynn, it doesn't take a mathematician to figure this out. It simply takes a person who is willing to be forgiven, to forgive ourselves because of that, and to work at forgiving others. It is the journey of relationships in God's kingdom.
God has made us a part of his big family through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. today there's so many in our world in need we entrust into your care those in Libya we entrust into your care those in Tunisia those more close to home that are struggling with needs because of storms and because of the challenges that are brought to them in life 
help them to know your peace and build up the work of organizations like Lutheran Disaster Relief and Lutheran World Relief and the Red Cross that can bring help and hope, especially to those who are in the most crisis-filled situations. We also give thanks today for the gift of life. And we celebrate with Catherine Smith and ask your blessing to be with Louise Rose, who was born this week. Thank you for her life and bless and keep her each and every day of her life. We also thank you for the gift of new life and relationships. We pray your blessing upon Taylor and James Miller, who, Mills, who were married yesterday. Help them to know of joy, the joy of life together and bless all who find themselves relationship of marriage. Help them to know of your love and grace in the midst of that. Merciful God. <laughs> table with great thanksgiving. We are so grateful for all that God has done, is doing, and promises yet to do through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we <clears throat> proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Let us join now in praying the prayer Jesus gave his disciples. Our Father, Lord Today, we have two ways for you to receive communion. If you prefer the three package communions, Cecilia will have those, and it has the, the wafer on top. Simply do that, and it will help you get the plastic <laughs> off so that you can take off the top. Everybody watching? And that's the bread, and then the second layer is for the juice. So that's one option. The other option is to come to me, and I will give you the wafer, and you can dip it into the wine. So by intention for any of you who prefer that, come. The feast is prepared. Strengthened by this food, 
Send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. Amen. Receive now this blessing for the way of your life. May the Lord bring you into an even deeper understanding of the love of God and of the patience that comes from Christ. May the light and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ fill your life and make you whole. Amen. Yeah.